For the competitors, you have to have technician level skills. For our product, it's as simple as somebody can identify that they've got a, a change in color of the LED. Today I've traveled to Renishaw to investigate the simplicity of installing the new Fortis encoders to a machine tool. Corey, thank you very much for having the NTD team on site today. And before, before we go in, go in and deep dive into the simplicity of installing the encoders, can you firstly give an overview about the new Fortis technology? Yeah, excellent. Thank you very much for uh, coming to, to see us. Um, the Fortis encoder is a, a linear scale made by Renishaw, so we, we've based it on our technology that we've been making for a long period of time. We're very established in the world of encoders outside of machine tools, and we've brought that into the Renishaw heartland, which is in machine tool applications. So you can see here it's providing direct encoder feedback on the linear axes of, of the machine. And we can see that the machine tool has got the guards off so we can visibly see the encoders and the kind of obstacles that are presented to someone looking to install a new one or a damaged one. So talk us through the benefits of the Renishaw Fortis encoder in regards to installation, how you've simplified this process. Yeah, that's right. So we, we'd, um, when we developed this product, we identified that there's three drawbacks on, on linear scales. So uh, our customer feedback was that they're hard to install, they always leak, and if you shake them a bit, then they, they rattle to pieces. Um, now, addressing that first point about the installation, um, the, the message we got from our, our partner companies is to say they need something which is installable by an assembly operator, not as a technician. So that's one of the key points. It has to be really simple and really easy for someone to understand how to be able to do it. Not everyone installs linear scales on every machine. Sometimes it's only done once a month. So it has to be a very intuitive process. And that's what we've done at Renishaw. Corey, in regards to mach new machine tool builds, um, how many of them new machine tools would you say that encoders are, are fitted to? Yeah, so it depends on the, the machine builder. So, but on, on average, it's around about 5 to 10% of machines are built with linear scales are, are being built directly into new, new machines. And is that, um, again, driven by applications in regards to accuracy, quality of part, surface finish? Exactly. So it's um, this is something being driven by two different um, requirements. So you've got uh, people making machines where they're chasing after the last last micron, or in some cases even even chasing after nanometers. And we've also got a growing demand as well for people doing fully automation. So they they want lights out production, and so they need to improve the CPK values of the machine so that they can get a process which can reliably be left to continuously work with very limited human interaction and they don't find out all of a sudden oh, we just made an hour's worth of scrap you know so those are the two areas which which drive the uptake of, of linear scales and tell me about mm. some of the features that you've introduced into these linear scales that help um, make the, the complete process really foolproof yeah, exactly. So what we've done is, um, we, as part of our development, we removed the uh, the, the rollers and the, the the guided carriage from inside the encoder. So instead of that, you've got a non-contact system, and we're able to measure the signal strength and therefore the alignment of the encoder directly. Um, so that what that means is we can actually take that sophisticated information and feed it back to the installer by way of an LED. So we have got a software package where you can see the exact signal level, but it's as simple as someone saying, okay, when I've done everything correctly, then I've got a blue LED, I know I've done my job right. Just as importantly, if they don't get that blue LED and they've got an area where it's red, they can see, actually, I've made a mistake here. And that's one of the things that separates um, in the installation of this encoder compared to the installation of our competitors. For the competitors, you have to have technician level skills. For our product, it's as simple as somebody can identify that they've got a, a change in color of the LED. And Corey, what would be the reasons behind changing an encoder on a legacy machine tool? Sure. Now, the, uh, the feedback we had um, from, from the marketplace is that you can have, you know, ideally you want the encode to be last in a lifetime in a machine, so 20 years or, or so, something of that, that order of magnitude. But because the um, alternative encoders aren't able to feed back when the installation's been done incorrectly, that means that a product can go out, out into the field, it's misaligned, and suddenly your life expectancy 
isn't 20 years, it's more like two years, or sometimes even two months. And that affects the brand reputation for the machine builder, and it causes downtime, which is unplanned, unscheduled downtime. Quite often it comes with a, a penalty clause as well. So, so that's the thing we wanted to identify and work around and come up with a solution for that. And that's what Renishaw has done with this product. So just to summarise, Curry, you're not only simplifying the installation of the new Fortis, uh, encoder but you're also using the technology for diagnostics um, once the encoder is at um, the end user companies being used for manufacturing. Ex you're 100% right. The, the, you can see in this situation here how hard it would be to get alignment tools and technician level tools into this machine. It's just simply not really possible. You'd have to do so much more disassembly work here. Whereas with our encoder, if there's been a situation like a crash in the machine, you need to be able to find out what has gone wrong. And that can be as simple as the customer reporting back and saying, okay, I've crashed my machine. At one, and as a service engineer, you say, okay, what's the LED doing? And they can say at one end of the, the encoder it's red, the other end it's blue. Okay, I'm already thinking I need to realign this encoder when I get there. And it means that the service engineer can bring with him what is required to get that machine up and running the same day. That's been our target, is to provide an opportunity for service engineers to go into a customer and the same day find the problem, diagnose the problem, identify the solution, enact the solution, and then um, prove that everything is reinstalled correctly by the software where you've got signal strength versus access position and then provide that report to the customer and say, here it is, your machine's now back up and running.